Hello my fellow Rubyists. Today I'm going to take a little bit of a detour from my regular type of video and talk about something called Retrieval Augmented Generation or RAG. For those of you who are not familiar with it, RAG is an AI framework that enhances the performance of large language models by integrating external knowledge sources to provide more accurate and up-to-date responses. It combines traditional information retrieval methods with generative AI capabilities to improve the relevance and reliability of generated content. So as developers, why do we care about RAG? RAG is a critical component in bringing AI to the real world. We've all witnessed how impressive it is to see AI build new things using modern, well-understood and documented frameworks and libraries. However, AI is less impressive when it comes down to maintaining or building applications that the model has not been trained on. This includes older or unfamiliar frameworks and libraries or even the latest frameworks and libraries. This is where RAG comes in. This gives us the ability to use the reasoning and generative capabilities of modern LLMs with proprietary or unfamiliar knowledge that it hasn't been trained on. In order to thrive in the AI age, software developers will need to have a good understanding of RAG as it will be a critical tool in their toolbox. In today's video, I'm gonna give a high level overview of RAG using embeddings. Next, I'm going to give you a demonstration of a RAG implementation I wrote using Ruby, Voyage AI, and Quadrant. We'll then take a look at the code. And finally, we'll look at a RAG Lite implementation with Contextly, which is an application I plan to release to the public in the future. What you see here is the architecture for a modern, efficient, and effective RAG system using embeddings. This process can be broken into two high-level steps. The first is gathering, processing, and storing the documentation in a database, and the second is retrieving this documentation for use in a large language model. Beginning with the storage, the system is given a document or documents. It breaks each one of those documents down into small chunks. Each chunk is then fed to a special purpose embedding LLM, such as Voyage AI. This LLM will create an embedding for the chunk, which to the human eye is nothing more than an array of floats. This embedding, along with the original chunk of text, is then stored into a vector database, such as Quadrant, for later search and retrieval. The search and retrieval process begins with the user typing in a query to the LLM. That query then gets sent to the same embedding model that embedded the documents, where an embedding, again, an array of floats is generated that represents the query. This embedded query is then used to search the vector database to find similar embeddings or chunks that are most likely to have the data necessary to respond to the query. The most relevant chunks, along with the original query, are then added to the context to the LLM so that it can reason about the query and form a response. What you see here is the Ruby RAG implementation that I'm about to demonstrate. This flow is almost identical to the RAG implementation we just went over with the addition to one step at the beginning and the removal of one step at the end. As you can see here, I added an AI step that takes place before the document is broken down into chunks. The purpose for the AI here is to take a look at the document and optimize it and also convert it to Markdown before it's broken down into chunks. This is handled with a specialized prompt that I created and produces a better result than I got before I added this step. At the end of the process, you can see I terminate where we get the results back from the vector database. I have not yet implemented a way to implement this in the LLM to generate the final results. Without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at some code. I'm gonna start by checking out the gem file for this project. You can see here we're using NoGoJiri and HTT Party for extracting um, HTML and parsing it. This particular implementation assumes the documents are coming from the internet. I am using Voyage AI for our embedding model, so you can see that I have the gem installed here. I am using Quadrant as a vector database, and you can see here I have the Ruby SDK uh, gem available. I'm not gonna go into a lot of uh, information on Voyage or Quadrant, but if you're interested, I suggest you take a look. The files I have highlighted here are all part of the document storage process. The file names pretty much explain what they do, 
the root of our uh, storage process is the RAG service. And of course, we have uh, classes that do our embedding, that chunk our documents, that optimize um, our documents and convert them to Markdown. And then we have a page scraper that will, of course, go out to the internet and scrape the documentation. And finally, we have the Quadrant Store, which is used to store the embeddings and the chunks in the vector database. The Search, Ruby Script, and the Quadrant Searcher class are used for searching the results and document retrieval. I'll start by taking a look at our main class for document storage, which is the RAG service. You see the RAG service has an initialize uh, method in it, as well as a setup knowledge base method that is private. And it also has the code necessary to run this from the command line. As you can see here, the command line implementation allows us to pass five different arguments. The first is the URL for the root document. The second is the collection name. And this is going to be the name of the collection in Quadrant. And we have a link filter, which allows us to limit the number of links that are followed based on a regular expression. And we also have regular expressions for content start pattern and content end pattern. And this would represent the part of the page that we wish to extract as documentation. For example, the body tags, which if left unspecified is the default. Moving up to our initialize function, you can see the, its only purpose is to set up our uh, variables and then to invoke the setup knowledge base method. The setup knowledge base method is the orchestrator of the entire process. It begins by invoking our page scraper to pull the content from the URL. It then constructs our content chunker. And if we have content, it begins optimizing the main page content. Once the main page content has been optimized, it will call the chunker and chunk it. It will then store the chunks and metadata about each chunk into an array for later storage. Next, it's going to go through each of the links that were on the main page and essentially do the same thing, optimizing, well, scraping, then optimizing, then chunking, and again, putting those into our array for later storage. I have it putting out uh, some statistics as it goes so that I can monitor the process. It will then go ahead and create our chunk embedder and it will call Voyage AI and embed each one of the chunks in our chunk array. And then finally, using our Quadrant Store class, it will store the embeddings in Quadrant. With each embedding, it will store the related chunk and metadata about the chunk, like the original URL and a chunk number. So now I'll take a quick look at each one of these classes and show you what they do. I'm going to start with the page scraper. We can start with our scrape method, which simply fets, fetches the main page and then extracts the content of the main page, and then extracts the links from the main page. This solution is designed to extract the main page that we provide it and the first tier of links. Scrolling down a page a little bit here, you can see when it extracts the content, it takes a look at our start pattern and end pattern that I mentioned earlier to only extract the parts of the page that we want. And finally, our extract links will actually go through the main document and find all of the first tier of links and return those and then this page scraper will need to be invoked for each one of them. The main page can be either HTML or it can also be a sitemap XML document. The interesting method in the content optimizer is process chunk. This takes our content and runs it against GPT-40 mini LLM with this prompt. You are a content optimization assistant. Your task is to convert all the provided HTML text content into clean, well-formed markdown. Ensure our, all code examples are properly wrapped in markdown code blocks with the appropriate language tags. Preserve the semantic structure and meaning of the content. Remove any unnecessary HTML tags or formatting. Keep the content informative and clear. Only output the markdown, no other text or comments. Do not add markdown tags to the results. Here is the content to optimize, and then we provide it with the original content. The chunk embedder is responsible for getting the embeddings for each chunk from Voyage AI. You can see here that's handled with his embed chunks method. Voyage AI limits the number of chunks that it can embed in a single batch to 128. So we split our chunks into 128 uh, chunk batches and invoke the Voyage API for each. The batches are then all combined and returned. 
Finally, we have the Quadrant Store, which is responsible for storing our embeddings in the vector database, which I have running locally on port 6333. This class will create the collection that we specified in Quadrant, or if it already exists, it will just append the embeddings to the collection. Now let's go ahead and test this out, but before I do, I need to start Quadrant, which like I said, I have running locally. I created this test script, which will run our RAG service on the flowbyte sitemap.xml file. I'm going to add these to the um, Quadrant collection flowbyte components, or created if it doesn't exist. Then I'm going to restrict this to URLs that have components in the path. And then finally, I'm going to be looking for the main node within the HTML. The main section is where Flowbyte has its documentation. That way I'm not parsing the sidebar and the header and the footer. I'm running this in a single process, so it'll take a little while to run this, and I'm going to speed up the video. As you can see here, our embeddings have been stored successfully. So taking a look at our Quadrant dashboard, I'm going to come over here to Collections, and we can see have our, we have our Flowbyte Components collection. If I open that up, you can see here are our chunks. You can see we have our content here, which is the actual chunk itself. And then there's the chunk number and the URL, which was the metadata we were sending it. And if I scroll down here, I can copy the embeddings for that right here. And then I'll go over to a text editor and paste them. And you can see here are the embeddings for that chunk. Now that everything is stored in Quadrant, we can perform a search against this and see how it does. Before I do that, I'm going to take a quick look at the Quadrant Searcher class. You can see here we have the main method in here is the search method, and it takes a query. And once again, this is going to create embeddings for the query, as we mentioned, and then it's going to call the points search on the Quadrant SDK. And it's going to dig for the result. And then in this particular case, I'm just going to print that out to the console. To perform the search, I've created this search Ruby file. It's just a script. You can see here an example of how to use it. You see it says um, search flow by components, which again is going to be the collection in Quadrant we want to search. And then I just pass it the query. I'm just going to copy and paste this example because I know that we um, stored the accordion documentation. And then I'll just add that to the console and hit enter. And you can see it does the search. And if I scroll up here, you can see it's returned some of our chunks. And you can see here, it gives it a score. And you can see here, we have chunks that are related to the accordion. So it looks like it did its job. Contextly is an application that I've written that helps me store and retrieve commonly used prompts, terminal commands, and relevant to this video, context items. A context item is just a fancy way of saying a document that has been optimized by AI and converted to an AI-friendly markdown format. The source of these documents can be text files or PDF files, web pages, or even YouTube transcripts. The user can then copy a URL to the content or the actual content itself and add it to the context of their favorite AI tool. This diagram shows how these context items can be used in a RAG-like way with Contextly, with the document storage flow being the flow I just described. The first step of the search and retrieval process is to provide the AI with a summary index of the relevant documents and a tuned prompt guiding it on how to use it. At this point, I can prompt the AI to do something, say, create a new page. With the guidance the AI was given, it will then search the summary index looking for relevant documentation and ask me to add any documents that will help it complete the task. Once I've added the relevant documentation, it will then complete the task, generating my web page. Let's see this in action. On the context items page, I can filter my context items using tags. I can then click on copy summary, which will copy the URL to the summary index for the filtered results. 
For demonstration purposes, I'll paste this URL into a web browser and you can see each context item, including the document purpose and a URL to access it. To demonstrate RAG, I'm going to have Ader scrape this URL into its context. Now I'm going to give Ader the guidance it needs or the tuned prompt in order to make use of the summary index. The prompt reads, in addition to your current capabilities, I want you to be an AI documentation retriever. You will be given a list of context items or items, each containing a link, URL, and a purpose for the information in the link document. When I say research followed by a prompt, your job is to analyze the given prompt and return a list of links to the most relevant context items in the provided list. You do not need to provide explanations or reasoning. Before you can respond to prompts, you will need to ensure I have provided the URL containing this list. Here is your first prompt. Research. I will be creating a new application using Flowbyte for page layouts and responsive design. Submitting the prompt yields an almost immediate result saying, based on your research request about creating a new application using Flowbyte for layouts and responsive design, these context items would be the most relevant, followed by four context items, including links to Flowbyte navbar documentation, sidebar, cards, and tables. At this point, I can ask Ader to add each one of these component documents to the context. That is it for today's video. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.